This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Over a hundred leading European academics have signed a petition condemning what they call Israel's systemic annihilation, unquote, of the educational system in the Gaza Strip. The petition, which was led by the group Euromed Human Rights Monitor, condemns Israel's targeting of academics, educational institutions and cultural heritage sites in Gaza. As The Intercept recently reported, within the first hundred days of its war on Gaza, the Israeli military systematically destroyed every single university in the Gaza Strip. Nearly 100 university deans and professors and three university presidents in Gaza have been killed in the Israeli assault. Meanwhile, over 4,300 students and more than 230 teachers, professors and administrators have been killed. Meanwhile, Hebrew University in Jerusalem is coming under criticism for suspending an internationally renowned Palestinian professor for saying Israel's committing genocide in Gaza. Nada Shaloub Kavorkian is a world-renowned feminist scholar whose extensive work has focused on the impacts of militarization, surveillance and violence on the lives of Palestinian women and children. She made the remarks in an interview on Israel's Channel 12 on Monday, where she also said it was time to, quote, abolish Zionism. The next day, the university issued a statement saying, quote, as a proud Israeli public and Zionist institution, the Hebrew University strongly condemns Professor Shahub Kavorkian's recent shocking and outrageous statements to ensure a safe and conducive environment for our students on campus. The university has decided to suspend Professor Shahub Kavorkian from teaching activities effective immediately, they wrote. Professor Shalhoub Kavorkian had been under pressure to resign from the university since late October, when she joined over 1,000 academics around the world in signing a petition calling for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. Following her signature, the leadership of Hebrew University sent her a formal letter denouncing her and pressuring her to resign. Yesterday, Palestinian students on the Hebrew University campus demonstrated against Professor Shahoub Kavorkian's suspension on campus and chanted the Palestinian national song Maltini in protest. Well, Professor Nadra Shalhoub Kavorkian joins us now on the program, academic, feminist, author and activist based in Jerusalem. Up until her suspension, she was chair at the Faculty of Law, Institute of Criminology and the School of Social Work and Public Welfare at Hebrew University. She's also the chair in global law at Queen Mary University of London. She's the author of several books, including Security, Theology, Surveillance and the Politics of Fear as well as militarization and violence against women in conflict zones in the Middle East, the Palestinian case study. Today, she's joining us from London, where she just flew to. Uh, Professor Shalhoub Kavorkian, welcome to Democracy Now! Can explain your decision to leave and what exactly happened? Yes, hi, Amy. Thank you for having me at Democracy Now! Actually, I'm not the chair of the Faculty of Law. I'm a member of the faculty, and I'm a researcher that studies state crime and, uh, and genocide and victims of abuse of power. The decision was made uh, by the university to suspend me uh, after a podcast that happened that asked me about my field of expertise. Let me remind you, I'm a scholar that studies state crime. I'm a scholar that studies genocide. I'm a scholar that really looks at the mundane, at the effect of what goes on, and that studies anti-racism from a feminist uh, perspective. So what happened is that I actually the letter was publicized before I, I read it, and nobody have contacted me. And this is not the first time that the Hebrew University, um, you know, publicized it. They did it in October when I said that what is happening in Gaza is a genocide. Of course, two months afterward, the ICJ is looking at it and they even issued uh, provisional measures uh, against the state of Israel. But I also need to remind us all that uh, the academic space is a space that's supposed to be a space whereby we share our ideas, the multiplicity of ideas. And then the Hebrew University is sending me a letter saying, telling me that this academic institution, which is the Hebrew University, is a Zionist institution, 
which means if my narrative is an anti-Zionist and my narrative is a clearly anti-Zionist, I am, and I am calling for abolishing Zionism because I see it as very violent towards the people and as causing uh, criminalities, and therefore I look at state criminality. Uh, and uh, the fact that the university is not only sending me a letter, it's uh, the dean of the School of Social Work actually called my students and he told them in a very forceful full manner that I'm out, that I have no place at the Hebrew University, which was my academic institution for the past 30 years. This is a place where I taught, where I did the research. The question remains whether what is teachable, what is um, what should be written, what is uh, publishable, what is what we can speak as scholars that are studying state criminality as opposing to what is going on, as opposing to what the state is doing is uh, not accepted, so they throw us out of the university. And this is the same policy that that the state of Israel is doing um, outside. So it's silencing, it's preventing people from speaking, it's threatening, it's punishing. And it's also done in a very degraded and indignifying manner, calling my student a day before the end of the first semester and telling me you're suspended is something that is beyond any expectations. But this is an end stressing it's a Zionist institution. You can't abide by these rules year out. My only concern, Amy, today is the safety of students, uh, the safety of my, uh, of, of my students, uh, Jewish, Jewish and Palestinian, that are standing against genocide, standing against the war, refusing to see the continuous and ongoing atrocities. My really concern is the silencing of dissent all over the world, because we see it in academic institutions. The question, if we think that academic institutions should work according and by the orders from the state, I don't know why we're having academic institution. Academia and research requires that we're attentive to details, to what goes on, to the life of, of women, men, children. And I'm really concerned today. And of course, I must clearly uh, state that the behavior of the university is a behavior that is threatening the safety of our students, the safety of uh, colleagues that are speaking against the genocide, and my own personal safety as a person who lives in Jerusalem and the safety of my family. Professor, can you tell us what you mean by your call for abolishing Zionism? Yes. Well, I see that the Zionist entity started by displacing people, by causing major harms, by massacres that were uh, documented by historians, by sociologists, by political scientists and international relations. I see Zionism that have used the law and ruled by law and not the rule of law. I've seen the, uh, the Zionists causing major harm since 1948, since the Palestinian Nakba, in relation to what goes on. And it's not only my position, the position of many scholars that see it, see and uh, see Zionism as a very racialized and racist uh, ideology that is about the life and livability of one group and the exclusion and the marginalization and death of the other group. I think we can definitely live together without the Zionist ideology if we, will, we can talk more in terms and in concepts of justice, of equality, of fairness, of multiplicity of ideas, and not using one ideology to claim that we are here and the rest should be excluded. And I think, uh, Amy, you see it today clearly in Gaza. What is going on today in Gaza when, when babies are dying decomposed in incubators, and I write about unchilding, I write about the attacks on children, I write about the attacks on communities, what we see in Gaza, turning it into a collective grave, is really very t telling. It's really the culmination of a very, very, very violent uh, ideology. So I guess it's time to reconsider the Zionist ideology, because it started since the early 90s with violence, with dispossession, and with lots of massacres, and to call for 
a discussion that is away from that very ra very racist and very uh, unfair and uh, you know an unhumane ideology professor nadra shalhub kavokian can you talk about uh, the concept you put forward of unchilding yes you know uh, working for years with children watching them uh, watching them interacting in a space that is so militarized, like East Jerusalem. I'm, I'm, I live, I reside in East Jerusalem. I raised my three beautiful daughters in Jerusalem. And the effect of the system looks at Palestinian children otherwise as others, but looking at children as unchilded. And I see it today, only two days ago, Rami, a 12-year-old from Mukhayyam Shafat, was shot and killed without even a reason he was playing. It's Ramadan. So... What I, I explain in my book uh, on unchilding is that, number one, our children are political capital in the hands of the state. The state looks at them and clearly defines them as non-children. They can be killed. They can be incarcerated. They can, they, uh, you can prevent them from studying. And you see, again, the culmination of unchilding, you see it today in, in, in Gaza. But look at uh, occupied East Jerusalem, occupied East Jerusalem, the number of children that were arrested, that were incarcerated, the number of children in the West Bank, in Hebron, and so on. So childhood in Palestine requires a different critical lens. Childhood in Palestine, as in other um, settler colonial context. And I need to remind the viewers that this is a settler colonial entity. It's, there's a structure and it's not an event here and an event there. It's built about the indigenization of the settler and the eviction of the native. And it's embedded in the logic of elimination. So the elimination of our kids in various modes, whether by, by incarcerating them and you see the necrocarceral machinery against them in, in every place or by controlling their way of living, of moving, or controlling. Um, and these are, again, these are topics that I have discussed, I have covered for over 30 years as a professor at the Hebrew University at both the Faculty of Law and School of Social Work. And on my question always, and especially now, when they decided, when they took this uh, decision, is how can a scholar of state crime, a scholar that is studying uh, victims of abuse of power, that is talking to them, listening to the voices of the kids, listening to the voices of fathers that are trying to safeguard parents that are also being unparented, how can a scholar like me, who's doing and researching, um, sit and be silent in times of genocide? How can you silence the voices of dissent all over the world? And I, I think that as an academic institution, they really need to rethink their steps. And until now, Amy, nobody has talked to me, not the president, not the rector. All they do is they send letters and the letters are sent to uh, the media. And, and then I learn about it. And I must tell you that, you know, this time sending the letter to the media and all of a sudden, everybody is talking about me, my photo, my pictures. Uh, it's very scary in an area that is heavily militarized. And, and maybe I should stress one thing that is important. The Hebrew University is highly militarized. Our students, I mean Jewish students, are walking around with rifles, with guns. And Palestinian students are extremely worried and, and fearful. And I'm, as a Palestinian professor, I talk about those things. I study, I'm running a major study funded by the Israeli Science Foundation on the issue of the effect of, of enrolling in a university that speaks and, and thinks in a specific way. But I thought that they will be open to multiplicity of ideas since I was writing about those issues for a year. And this is me, this is my career, this is my analysis uh, for a year. But let me again stress that I'm really worried today because yesterday one of the students that participated in the demonstration was arrested. I'm very worried. They were taking pictures of the different students that were there. And mind you, they were professor, they were Jewish and Palestinian professor, they were Jewish and Palestinian students demonstrating against the decision 
and and framing them and shaming them and attacking them the way they're doing to me and trying to punish is something that should not be done in an academic institution. And how do you answer the charge from Prime Minister Netanyahu on down um, that to be anti-Zionist is to be anti-Semitic, Professor Shahub Kaborkian? Well, anti-Zionism anti is totally not anti-Semitism. Anti-Zionism is to refuse to accept violence, and this is not anti-Semitism. Anti-Zionism is to refuse to accept continuous dispossession, is to refuse to accept this ideology of supremacy, is to refuse to accept the, the securitized ideas of one group against the other. Uh, the opposite, totally opposite, actually, uh, to think through the lens of anti-Semitism is to remember never to frame any group or anybody as ontologically below being below human. And that's exactly what Netanyahu, what Zionism is doing to the Palestinian. It's actually anti-Palestinianism and, uh, and anti-Semitism are, are, are very close. I guess that um, I, I think that we need to always remember that abuses of power is, is, um, is anti-Semitism, that is framing one group as non-human is anti-Semitism, and this is what uh, Zionism is doing to us. We're going to break, but I'm going to ask you to stay on as well as we go to an Israeli scholar, Maya Wind, who has written the book Towers of Ivory and Steel, um, How Israeli Universities Deny Palestinian Freedom. We've been talking with the renowned Palestinian academic, Professor Nadra Shalhoub Kavorkian, uh, who is a feminist author and activist, usually based in Jerusalem, recently suspended by Hebrew University after uh, for, uh, teaching there for decades. She's the author of a number of books, including Security Theology, Surveillance and the Politics of Fear, and Militarization and Violence Against Women in Conflict Zones in the Middle East, the Palestinian Case Study.